Hey, good morning, guys. It is Monday, and it is time for Tech Tip Talk. I'm going to wait for everyone to show up. And... Hi! It's good to have you guys here. Welcome. I'm so glad you guys could join me today. Hi, Christina. Good morning, everyone. There she Hi, is. Hi, guys. Hey, good morning. Hi. So here we are again. It's another Tech Tip Talk on Monday. I am Sarah Walworth. Christina McGrath. And we are both knitting tech editors. And the goal for these talks is to give you guys information on pattern writing and knitting design from a tech editor's standpoint and also to talk about resources and to answer your questions so if while we're talking you guys have a question just throw it into the comments we're really happy you guys are here hi everyone hi Ruth. We are. hi everybody hi everyone. amy so to today's topic is gauge everybody's favorite thing to uh Love to Ignore. <laughs> Gage. Oh, Hi, Ruth. Awesome. We're glad you're here, Ruth. It's exciting to be here um, oh, with you Jackie. all. Hi, Jackie. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know. So, Gage. Um, <laughs> Gage is the crucial and most important thing in knitting and in knitting design. Um, it is the thing that gets a lot of bad rap in blog posts and in, even among conversations between knitters. But if you don't understand gauge and you don't understand what gauge affects, then you don't have something that works in knitting. Gauge is everything. Well, and that's the bottom line. I think the biggest important takeaway about gauge is that it is the most important thing. If the gauge of your pattern is wrong, the whole thing's going to be wrong for everyone who knits it. It matters. And so not only does the knitter need to know what their gauge is, but the gauge on the pattern has to be correct. Right. So maybe we need to define gauge um, because I think people use different terminology. Some people use tension. Um, right. Gauge is the size of your stitch. So if you're looking at your piece of knitting, let's say you knit a sweater and you're designing a sweater, your gauge is how many stitches and how many rows are over a particular dimension, whether it right. be four inches or 10 centimeters right. or over the whole thing. So gauge is how big your stitch is. And if, does that all make sense to you guys? I don't know, Christine, if you can elaborate a little bit more. It's pretty much what gauge means, right? That's what it means. Um, and the reason it's important is because um, if the size of your stitches is any bigger or smaller than the size of the stitches of the sample of the thing you're knitting, it's going to come out a different size. So for instance, if I sit down with a size six needle right now and some worsted weight yarn and I knit a, what we might call a tension square or a gauge swatch this big and I just sit here and knit, I can guarantee you that Christina's gauge and the size of her swatch will be different from mine. Mm. So there's, there's some two things that are pretty consistent when you're talking about gauge that's your needle size that's one thing and generally speaking they're standardized and there's the size of the yarn like the diameter of the the yarn the weight of the yarn um, the thickness of it but the other things that everybody else is different with is how we hold our yarn how we execute a stitch, 
our tension of the yarn off of our fingers to our needle can all be different. So this is why it's super important in your pattern, you give exact information to your knitters about what gauge they need to achieve in order to duplicate your design in the size that you say it should be. Because if they don't have that information, then whatever they cast on is going to be whatever size it is. And, and Anna Lulu says different needles to affect gauge. Absolutely. So like right. The so if you're knitting composition of your needles, size six bamboo needle, your gauge is not going to be the same as if you're working on a size six metal needle. Exactly. Yeah. Meaning metal versus wood mm -hmm. or plastic or mm -hmm. um, acrylic. There's all yep. different types of needles um, and that can affect your gauge. It can affect your tension too. So yep. as a tech editor, the number one thing I put in my spreadsheet when I start checking a pattern, I don't know about you, Christina, gauge. I put in the tension. Top left corner. Top left corner. I even name the cell because almost everything that we're checking related to measurements and related to dimensions is going to be affected by that number. So how can you, where, where do we go from there? <laughs> well, how... so you have to know what the gauge is. You have to swatch. Mm -hmm. I think that the two important things to take away is that gauge matters the most and yes. is important. It is worth the time to know what your gauge is. So doing a swatch before you do all the math, before you mm -hmm. knit the sample, so you have an idea of where you're going. And when you're done with the sample, I would check the gauge again on a large part of the sample. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's important to know what... Um, gauge to communicate to the knitter on the pattern um, and then how to knit a gauge swatch mm -hmm. to get as accurate as you can. And there's a lot of different opinions about how to do that. But I think if you think about it as the gauge swatch is meant to be an like a snippet of the fabric of your finished item. Exactly. It's, it's not a separate thing by itself. It's meant to be like if you cut a hole out of the back of your sweater, this right. is what you would have. That's so really anything, you, anything you add to your swatch, like a border or do something differently um, or anything that's not going to be the way you knit in the garment pattern, knitting the thing, mm -hmm. it's going to affect your stitch and row gauge and that's going to give you a lying gauge. A line so I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's important to know that a mm -hmm. gauge is important. And because gauge is important, it's um, important to correctly uh, find out what the gauge is and correctly measure the gauge. So like don't, and you know, again, I, when you're measuring your ga for gauge, I would not use like a fabric tape measure. I would use a ruler, something yes. that is static, something that, yeah, something that you know is correct. Right. Right. And I, we can break that down a little bit. So mm. Hold up that swatch again. That swatch is not small. How big do you think that is? Maybe four? I don't know. It's about it's about five inches, maybe more, five and a mm -hmm. half. This should and be like also, the, okay. the minimum size of a gauge swatch. Okay, row gauge counts too. Yes. I know lots of times. I mean, hey, as a knitter, like I'm way different. Mm -hmm. Like lots of times. You do a little bit and you think, oh, this is good. And that's a lot of the reason why people will put borders on their swatches so they don't right. have to knit as long. They can make it a smaller piece because the borders will hold the fabric flat, whereas this will not. And this is a stockinette swatch. So if you're doing garter stitch, that doesn't apply. But right. see what I'm saying? The row gauge matters too. It's not just about stitch gauge, especially if you're working a garment. Um, exactly. And actually... Um, um, Kate Atherley talks about this in a little video series she did for Nitty that I just saw posted yesterday um, directed at knitters for why it matters your gauge and why you have to wash what blocking means, you know, things like that. But she talks about what we always talk about, too, is when a pattern tells you to work to a certain length, that's a blocked length. That's a finished measurement length. Mm -hmm. So 
if your swatch, which you need to wash the same way you're going to wash your sweater mm -hmm. and then let it lay flat and dry, if it's a different size than how it was before you washed it, then your knitting is going to be the same when you wash the sweater. Exactly. So you so, need to know your row gauge also to get those lengths that you need so you can knit to the correct number of rows. So and in designing, you need to know yeah, that too. The, the primary thing is you are all knitters first before you're a designer. Um, so you have to also kind of think as a knitter. Why do gauge swatches lie? And the biggest reason is that we make them this big. <laughs> We make them tiny, and then we expect to extrapolate a large piece, whether it be a garment or an accessory, off of that tiny little amount of data. So if you are designing and you are going to do a gauge swatch before you start making your sample, you got to do big. you got to get as much data as possible. Um, and the reason why is if you're off, by half a stitch over you, the length of four inches, that translates to tens of stitches over the circumference of a garment, right. which can be inches difference. Right. So in order to set yourself up for success, you've got to go through the same process that your knitters are going to go through right. and give yourself some good data to work with both stitch and row. Don't cheat yourself by going small. As hard as it is, that is mostly the reason why gauge swatches lies, because they're too small. There's not and enough the larger, information to be accurate. Right, that's the whole thing, right? You need, the more information you have, the more accurate it's gonna be, and that's the same with the gauge swatch. The bigger it is, the more it's gonna be correct. You'll have a better idea if you measure over, whatever, five inches or four inches than mm -hmm. if you measure over one or two inches. And the other thing I would suggest for gauge swatching before you start designing, working out the math, is to measure using a straight edge again. Don't use a flexible tape measure because you're not going to get accurate measurements. Use a straight ruler or a yardstick and measure both as much as you possibly can, the stitch count and the row count um, over a number of inches. And translate that to per inch if that's what you're working in or per centimeter and then when you're working out the numbers for your design and you're working maybe also the sample or you're having a sample knitter do it come back at the end and double check that your sample matches and, and that happens a lot i would it like does. to say there are a lot of times that i i mean that I don't even know how many, like, oh my God, how many patterns have we added? Like so many, but I think, well, we didn't, we count it. I think between the two of us, it's close to a thousand patterns. Yeah. Now. So this, this, um, this happens a lot that the gauge will be on the pattern and I'll speak to the designer because something doesn't work or are you sure? Or geez, these measurements aren't what you're they getting. So what's not adding up is the gauge, right? Does the pattern need to be changed? And lots and lots of times they'll go to the sample and measure it. And it's not correct. It's not the gauge that I was given that they have on the pattern because who knows why? I mean, who knows? There, right? there could be Something. any number of reasons. Yeah. It could just be the way that the sample was worked sometimes as you relax when you're knitting. Mm -hmm. your, gauge, um, it, your gauge changes. Yeah. It gets looser. Or maybe you didn't treat the swatch in the same way that you treated the garment as far as washing and blocking. The other so thing always, too, I would always double check your gauge after you've always. finished the sample. Be sure that the sample that you've based all these sizes on, right? Yes. Is, is the gauge in the pattern. Because all those measurements in the schematic mm -hmm. that the knitter's going to try to match up to themselves and what they want is based off this gauge. Right. So exactly. If and it's they not have... right, they're going to knit something that doesn't fit. And they have to do some work ahead of time. They might have to change if they're doing some yarn substitution. They may have to use a different needle size to get your gauge to come close to it. They may not be able to achieve the row gauge that you do. Even um, if they use the same yarn, they might not be able to get the exactly, same gauge that you got. Because we all hold the yarn a little different. Yeah. 
So you got to yeah. give your, the gauge is the primary thing that everything on the pattern is based on. And <laughs> Jackie said she's going to go remeasure her sample now. <laughs> oh, Jackie. She and I, yeah, we have, we have some interesting conversations about gauge. Yeah. That's why she has those little, the little face there with the gritted teeth. The grimace. This is Jackie. So, and I do the same thing with some of my clients. Like they'll say, well, my gauge is 24 stitches over 30 rows over four inches. And I'm like, but really, according to your math, it's really this. And then we might need to adjust the gauge to really match the math or very rarely would they need to re a whole sample. Um, so you want to give your, back to what we were saying, is you want to give your knitters the best information to give them success. So right. and isn't that the main point? Like it's, that is the main it's point. not like, oh, in order for me to, you know, it's not, you need the gauge to be right for the knitter. So that yes. on the pattern, the, the, on the pattern, the gauge that's given and the directions that follow equal these finished measurements. Mm -hmm. So it's very important what's on the pattern, what the knitter gets, and that it matches the whole pattern. Because if that's not correct, if they need to modify for length, or if they don't get row gauge and they need to make some adjustments, then it's going to be like a double whammy. Okay, well, that's a whole nother thing. That's Any nother modifications thing. that they have to make, or say they knit to your gauge and they don't like the look of that fabric and they want to do a different gauge. <laughs> that always happens to me. Right? Come on. <laughs> always. You just watch, you go, I don't like it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if they want to make any kind of modifications to fit, if they want to make any kind of changes at all, all the changes and modifications they're making are based on the gauge of the pattern. Right. So it's like, it's everything. What do we always say? Gauge is everything. Gauge is everything. Yes. Gauge is the crux of knitting. Yeah. So here's the thing. What information do you need to give your knitter? Mm. You need to give them not just stitch gauge. You should give them stitch and row around gauge, depending on if it's knit flat or in the round. And you need to give it in the stitch pattern that takes up the main portion of the piece. That is most prevalent in the- Most idea. prevalent, at least that. So that's like the bare minimum. If you have a stockinette sweater that has maybe some little patterning at the cuff or something like that, you can give the gauge um, in stockinette so that they can do a gauge swatch in that pattern. Um, however, if you've got something wildly different going on, such as color work or cables or lace, you may need to consider giving multiple gauges. So for instance, I edit a lot of uh, yoked sweater patterns and a lot of times the, the a stranded gauge will be slightly compressed because there's a lot, there is a, it just ends up being almost square in some yarns. So you may give a stranded color work gauge so the knitter can know if they're on target and if they need to go up or down a needle size to maintain that size, especially because the yoke is so important for fit that the yoke be the right size. But then when they're done with the yoke, they may be knitting round and round in stockinette. So then you would need to give them a stockinette gauge. Okay, well then wait, I have a question for you, Sarah. Oh boy. <laughs> so I'm not a giant fan of asking the knitters to have to attain two gauges simultaneously. Right. Because almost never am I gonna get, like you said before. Yeah. So if I'm not going to get the same stockinette gauge as you, what is the likelihood that I'm going to get the same stockinette and the same color work together that is the same? So what I think, I think it's important for the knitter to like this, just when you had multiple gauges, it's confusing. So like you, I, I'm going to get back to it, but like you were saying about the cups or the collar, right? You can give those gauges, but they're not going to be the gauge you tell the knitter they need to achieve, right? You can give those it to are, your editor. You give it to your editor, but it's not even really need to be on the pattern. But for it, something, yes. like you said, a yoke sweater that's going to have a different gauge than the body is very important because all this business up here is like the important business. It's the important business to make for fit. Right. So when you have patterns like that, do you instruct the knitter to swatch for both gauges? And maybe they I have to change needle sizes going from the yoke to the body? I or... wouldn't. 
I wouldn't instruct it, but I would give it because so i I myself, my gauge changes from stranded to just plain oh, yeah. stock and sure. So I already know I got to go up a needle size. Um, but that just comes from practice and from experience. Oh, yeah. So it's helpful. I think it's helpful as a knitter to have information. Now, some designers, I don't know how they do it, but they actually are able to get with the gauge being the same with stranded and stockinette. Um, well, and, usually, I mean, sometimes I think that includes um, instructions to change your needle size. Change the needle size so that you can. Ah, mm -hmm. there's a really important point. When you're giving gauge and you have multiple needle sizes in your pattern. Oh, please say which needle is the gauge, the gauge needle. needle. And in the pattern, when you're giving instructions about needles, be sure to say smaller, larger. Make sure you're labeling which needles need to be used. If in, in, the instructions, what, in what circumstances? Right. And if, say, for example, your needle, your gauge needle is a size seven and your other needle is a size five, be sure that you say, or a needle two sizes smaller than the main needle, you know, or yes. the gauge needle, you know, oh, we have comments. Um, so Jackie and, says, I recommend different needle sizes for the same gauge between color work stuck in that. Yeah. That's my yeah. case. That's usually what has to happen, but not always. It depends also on the so yarn then, and the patterning. But so then if you do that, you're only giving one gauge and a way to get the same gauge with both things, as opposed to giving two gauges that the knitter has to achieve. Exactly. Do you know so, what I'm saying? Yeah. Creative Me Decay asks a really good question, Christina. If one knits a fabric that needs to be looser than what is normal for a yarn, do you put loose after the gauge so that people do not think it's an error in the pattern? Oh, you mean so they're aware that it's they're meant aware. to be. It's tell, meant to be an yes. airy, loose fabric, and they're not Tell like, the knitter what the sure. fabric is supposed to look like. You may even want to include a detail shot of the fabric so that they can fit almost with their eyes. They can feel what the hand, like the hand yeah. of the fabric. Um, the, you may want to include information that this is worked at a looser gauge than normally this yarn would be worked at, especially this happens in shawls. Yeah. Um, and there's places to put that like in the romance in the introduction where you're talking about how something is constructed. Yes. There's ways to talk about what kind of fabric you're, you're wanting and what kind of fabric you're expecting. Um, and, and you may want to tell them, you may need to go use two or three needle sizes larger than your usual needle for this particular type of yarn. Um, so be sure to swatch. Um, this, this is really important because as a designer, you are working with fabric. You're con creating fabric in your hands with your knitting. And the knitter is not sitting next to you. They don't know what it looks like. So this is, this is kind of a form of technical writing to describe what is the fabric supposed to feel like. It's supposed to be drapey and loose and airy, and there's supposed to be this many stitches per inch. And sometimes that many can rows. be tricky. Um, mm -hmm. So Jackie says, that's a good question. I have uploaded videos that show the fabric up close. Because that's I think, really great. Because I think people do, like Sarah said, if there is a gauge that's a little bit unconventional, people will say, geez, is that right? So I think it, I think it is important to say, you know, that this, and, and giving the gauge and saying to, that it's going to be looser than normal or tighter than normal, and this mm -hmm. is the reason why, is helpful because things like, like you were saying before, drapey, this, those things don't all mean the same thing to other to people, That's right? That's true. So That's very true. It's it's good to have the gauge and to make a note that makes the knitter reassured that it's correct. And showing the fabric is a great idea, and explaining that it's meant to be a little bit unconventional is a great idea. And but I am not a big oh, yeah. God. I was going to say if, for instance, this might also happen when you use a particular fiber, and you're using it at a gauge that isn't standard for that like what you would find on the ball band. So what you might also need to indicate is in your introductory information is to tell the knitter this gauge is, or this project is best worked with these types of yarns with well, this fiber. Well, that's very fiber. important because also substitutions. Otherwise they might, they might not be able to get it. They might not be able to achieve gauge if right. they substitute something so, different. But substitutions are like fine. Like that's the, that's what knitting is, right? 
Yes. Use whatever yarn you like, whatever yarn you have, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But it is important to note that um, different fibers are going to have different knit to different right. gauges just yes. successfully. So if you're trying to make like a mohair sweater, you're not going to get the same effect, not just look wise, but gauge wise mm -hmm. with uh, a wool, a, you know, a super wash of, wool. Yeah. Um, and even super wash wool to wool. Your yes. gauge is going to change when you wash times. that. Yep. Please wash <laughs> your swatches wash your swatch. the same the way, same way you're going to wash, wash your the garment. <laughs> Just like you're knitting it the same way, you want to wash it the same way. Yes. And I find this. linen really hard to get gauge. I think I do too. Yes. And I think it's because it's like not consistent, right? It's like, it's like, it's like knitting rope. It's really I'll hard to get even tension. It is yes. it's tricky. That's why I think like linen blends are sort of so nice, you know, because they give you a little, little more flexibility in the so yarn. Anya Lulu, I have resorted to pre-washing my linen and oh, I take it in the idea. hank. I keep it in, you know, in the hank and I untwist it and I lay it in hot water <laughs> because you're supposed to put linen in the washer and the dryer anyways to soften right. it up and put it in hot water to give it some uh, some more suppleness. Otherwise it, feel, it hurts my fingers to knit it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, um, I, linen is tricky, but remember that you are the designer and what gauge you get with your needles is what your whole design is based on. So even if it's hard to get gauge in that particular yarn, it's still okay to base your whole design on that gauge right. according to what you get for your, for your sample or for your swatch. Right. Um, and Jackie, Jackie says, says it changes when you wear it too. Yeah. It does. It's, and that happens and, with other yarns too. Like yeah. sweaters made out of super wash yarn are going to stretch as you wear them more than other types of yarn so, will. Anya Lulu, with linen in particular, I've learned from um, my little local yarn shop owner, Carla, but quits out at Fibers, who's a linen affectionado is to knit your swatch and then wash it and dry it multiple times before determining the gauge because it will change so much as you wear it. It gets drapier the more you wash and the more you dry it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that's a, it's a flexible fabric. It's always morphing and changing. Goody two six says, good idea to dip it in hot water before knitting with it. Just to get rid of that rope feeling is the only mm. reason why I do that. Jackie says, but, yeah. super wash, super wash with brownie face. Oh, I don't see that comment. I must oh, be you don't? Broken. No, I must uh... be broken. But no, I'm not a big fan of making the knitters get several gauges. Yeah. So if you're listing several gauges on your pattern because you think it's useful for them to know, which is fine, be sure that you specify which gauge is the pattern gauge, what the they need to, what they need on. to know, what they need mm -hmm. to achieve to knit the thing. You know yes. what I'm saying? I'm not a big fan of putting like every single gauge on the pattern. Give it to your tech editor so we can figure out Please your Please give it to your tech and editor. So can you. <laughs> and so, so yes. can you. But asking your knitter to get like do five gauge swatches or whatever. I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. So did we answer all your questions about gauge? If you guys throw some questions down in the comments, uh, we're happy to talk about it anymore. Um, oh, one more thing I'm not a big fan of about what you put on the pattern for gauge. Go. Um, lots of people think that you should always give a stuck in that stitch gauge. Oh, that's no right. matter we talk what, about this. no matter what the pattern right. is worked in. You should always give a stock and a stitch gauge for gauge because it's basic and that's what everybody can do for a gauge swatch. But if your pattern includes like nary no any stock and stock and stitch, <laughs> it's useless information for the knitter. I think it is. Yeah. Like if we're going to knit color work different than we're going to knit stock and net, then whatever color work, ribbing, lace, whatever main thing your pattern's made up of is also not going to be the same. You know, it doesn't relate. So Get better to give like a, and it doesn't, okay. And another thing, it doesn't have to be just because in the standard, in, uh, the standard right. in our industry is to give gauge over four inches. Of four inches. Doesn't it doesn't have, have to, be. to be like, if nope. you have a project that's in all lace 
you can say, you know, uh, the first repeat of chart A is equal to this many. Yeah. 3.75 inches by 5 inches. And is, and is this many? Yeah. And so, and you can Which even right. give a little, some people will even, if it's something like that, where it's some sort of pattern or design, and it's not as simple as, you know, this many rows and stitches in two by two ribbing. They'll sometimes even make up, and I know it's more work, but they'll sometimes make up like a, a little gauge sample mm -hmm. that you work mm -hmm. to figure out your gauge. Like, like you can give them a little tiny pattern of, hey, use this for right. your swatching purposes and it should measure this. And I think the only reason to do that is if, say, you know, a, a repeat of whatever the pattern stitch is, like if it's not just something simple and it's like a, something that needs to be like a whole repeat, if it's mm -hmm. way big, like yes, crazy exactly. big, you know, if it's Especially like Especially with big. like lace designs, you yeah. can have a or giant amount. Or say there amount. is no repeat. Say the whole thing is different, right. you know. Then exactly. you can make up a little snippet for them. But I don't find it very useful. And I know I'm being super opinionated today. <laughs> hey, it's our show. We can <laughs> do that if we want. <laughs> but I don't find it super useful to give a gauge that is nowhere mm -hmm. in the pattern. Who cares? The, the other you thing know. that I would highly recommend is to not give the knitters Hi, guys. partial gauge. So don't give them fractions of a stitch to measure. Oh. So don't say, oh, it's 20.5 stitches over four inches and 26.2. Don't do that. When you are measuring your gauge on your sample or on your swatch and you want to give this information to the knitter, give them whole stitches. So let's say it's not four inches. That's all right. Four inches is not a standard. Four inches and 10 centimeters. And we talked about this last time. You can go rewatch that video about four inches is not equal to 10 centimeters and what to do with that. Mm. But give them whole stitches. So say 21 is four inches, four and a quarter inches or whatever. Uh, it's very hard to measure half stitches. It is. It's and it's hard. less accurate. It's, <laughs> it's way less, less accurate. accurate. There's no way that you're going to get that accurately, you know, measuring yeah. quarter stitches, parts of stitches. I've had that in a bot pattern. I didn't notice at time of purchase, so I had to fudge it. You mean the gauge given that the way? The gauge like... was given in a fraction. Yeah, that's, I, I think that that automatically sets up the knitter to be frustrated. So give them whole stitches that they can use to put up against a ruler. And remember that most knitters are smart enough. No, I'd say all knitters are smart enough to measure to the quarter of an inch or to the half of a centimeter. So whatever. But a fraction of a stitch? Yeah, a fraction of a stitch is hard. So. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it depends on the weight of the yarn. Ursa is 11 and a half stitches to four inches, which is easier because it's bulky weight. So it's easier to measure because the stitches are larger. Yeah. Right. I, I Maybe, yeah. If the stitches are large. If it's a chunky weight or bulky weight, you can measure a half of a stitch a little bit but easier than definitely if it was lace weight, you couldn't. It but I'm hard. curious. I'm curious. And this is what kind of bugs me about how we feel we have to do things the way they've always been done, right? Yes. Like, um, if the gauge to Ursa was 11 and, a half, 11 and a half stitches to four inches, why not give gauge over a measurement that makes that a whole number? So, like, like why do we feel locked in over by these five and a quarter? You know, why do we feel locked in to these four, four inches when we, we could aren't. make, when we could make something simpler? Mm -hmm. Um, to measure. Do you know it's what I'm just, saying? It's just, and it's an idea. It, like half a stitch takes to. up much more space. Yeah, mm. because it's a, it's a, it's bulky weight. It's a large, uh, larger yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we had but, a question um, back here. I think we missed. Let me When giving back. a length in a pattern, for example, knit mm -hmm. until piece measures 12 inches, the knitter will not likely block their project at that point. Can you give the knitter an unblock? Oh, okay. Giving unblocked measurements is again mm -hmm. not useful because I don't think it's useful. Everybody's your, unblock is going to be different. Your unblocked gauge and my blocked gauge, uh, whatever. My unblocked and blocked is not going to match your unblocked and it's blocked. It's not going to match. Even if our blocked matches. 
right? Right. So I agree. And the only the only guaranteed thing in the pattern is the blocked gauge. Unblocked is a mystery. Who knows what you're going to get? And no, you're not going to block your project in the middle of what you're doing. Sometimes you can, but most of the time people aren't going to do that. And that's so why then, it's so useful to know your gauge when exactly. it's blocked so that you don't take out your tape measure on your lap while you're sitting on your couch knitting at night, which you're not going to get the right measurement. And measure anyway. this kind of, <laughs> right? Measure but a curve. Knit to the, that's why it's so important to know your Mm -hmm. Your gauge, because then you can knit to your blocked row gauge instead of to those number of inches. And you can give the knitter that information. So if they're knitting straight for 10 and a half inches, tell them how many rounds that is or how many rows. Yes, you can tell them how many rows, but then... Why not? That, and then, that's another then place that the knitter can, needs to be wise to know can that... row count instead of going to an inch right so if they had if they got the gauge on the pattern they can mm -hmm. use the row count i love patterns that say um i do know, too. as a knitter i mean x number of rows i mean unless i didn't get their gauge then you have to then you have to do the math yourself because as knitters we do that if we might need to adjust and find our own row gauge um and our what how many what the length would be in our own blocked gauge. We had another I question. Knitting, I think knitting to row gauge is a really good idea. I agree. And knitting to your blocked row gauge. I don't love giving both of them again for the same reason. The knitter's going to then feel pressure that they have to achieve simultaneously this unblocked gauge and this blocked gauge. Right. You exactly. Know what I mean? Don't don't bother with doing any unblocked measurements Ex unless you're putting that into the gauge section of the pattern if it's required for style or if you find it's important so that people can sometimes people find that important i personally don't think it is because everybody's unblocked gauge is going to be different well it um, makes the knitter feel like they have to achieve both simultaneously and i don't love that yeah that's true they um, what they need to achieve is blocked that's the important point so the other question that we missed way back up was do you have any tips on cotton yarn? Um, and the, the same principle applies for every type of fiber. When you're, you knit a gauge swatch or you knit your sample, wash you're it. going to wash it. So if your cotton yarn on the care instructions can go through the washer and the dryer, then that's what you would do. You would put your gauge swatch through the washer and the dryer measure it before you wash it and measure it after you wash it so that you can see what the difference is going to be while you're knitting. Um, but the principle's the same from wool to silk to mohair to alpaca, always the same. Treat your gauge swatch in the same way that you're going to treat the finished garment. And really think about that, that your swatch is like your sweater. It's mm -hmm. what it is. It is. It's a tiny piece of your sweater. It's and a you're going to spend your so much time knitting that sweater that mm -hmm. um, if you end up knitting your sweater and it all turns out wrong because you washed your swatch wrong, you're going to be mad. Yeah, exactly. So just oh, wash, it the, no kidding. wash it the same exact way you're going to wash your sweater because it really is like a snippet of your sweater. Yeah, we're, you're, we're very happy to answer your questions. We did get two questions before we started. Um, and it's related to sizing. Do you think, are we ready to go there, Christina? You think we could engage? Oh, just one last thing I wanted to say about okay. um, um, putting a half a half a stitch half in your a stitch gauge. Half a stitch in your gauge. I have seen that, obviously, and have seen that. And usually it is with big yarn. Right. Um, because what ends up happening is giving gauge over lots of time. Like, it's hard to know what to advise because sometimes it happened once to me she thought, well, I'm going to give the gauge over just two inches because if I give it over four inches, it's not even. But then you uh, also don't really okay. want to give gauge over two inches because we know that over four it's inches, tiny. it's not, not going to be the same, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's not really just two by two, two times two. Right. So I think it can be tricky when you're working, like, with Ursa, like, big yarn. Big yarn is but, tricky. But that's where it's I hard think, to design in. It's hard to knit in. That's, that's why there aren't I that think many. We need to challenge like this way mm -hmm. that we feel stuck. Like I would much rather yes. 
I would much rather always measure gauge over even stitch count and the size of it be whatever. It needs yeah, to so be. It, that would be 22, 23 over 8 inches. Would you want it like that for her previous gauge for Ursa? Um, hmm. Well, I just think that it's, it's just it's so difficult to measure these fractions of a, of a stitch. Okay, so as someone who works in a yarn shop, I don't love the advice you give gauge gauge over, over non-standard non but what's standard I measurement like jackie oh uh, well standard is like four inches four inches and i think the reason that she's saying that i mean she can obviously speak for herself but because it's what oh. everyone does right it's what everyone expects it's what everyone's gonna do um and mm -hmm. maybe if and maybe if you look at the gauge on a pattern and it does say that it's really four and a quarter inches mm -hmm. you might not even pay attention to that or even have noticed that or anything you're going to yeah. do it the way you know to do it because it's the way it's always been done. So I totally, like, I, I see the whole, I see, I see that. I can Because when a pattern. customer comes in with a pattern, I don't know and ask for yarn recommendations. So in other words, they're trying to look for yarn to fit a particular gauge. Right. And have some understanding of what yarns we have in the shop that will work for it if she can glance at the pattern. And that's really true. That's, that is a situation where that would make sense. So we're looking at it from two perspectives here. From the knitter's perspective, it's going to be tricky for them to get half a stitch and make it match a particular four inch length. From the yarn shop, they're looking at, well, it says it's 26 over five and a quarter. Um, so then that may make it trickier for yarn substitution. You would have to do the math of to find out exactly yeah. how no, much it, it is I mean, per it, inch. It definitely makes it trickier. The only thing I worry about when um, it just makes it, because as you break down that gauge mm -hmm. by inch, by like inch, say you, to, say you want to figure out your row gauge for how long to work. Mm -hmm. Then you've got even more fractions of a stitch, mm -hmm. right? That you're dealing with. Honestly, if it were over four and a half, I would probably not even see the half. That's what I'm saying. I think that because we're so used to, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like, um, it's how we size to the bus measurement. Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. take unlearning for people to not, to not like if a pattern says this is sized a different way or check your bicep. This is the important measurement or the neck or whatever it is. People automatically are looking at the bus measurement to size the pattern to themselves because that's what we've always done. And I think it's the same thing with the four inches. It's what we have always done and what we're used to. So we, we get kind of into a way of doing things the same way. Maybe we need to think outside the box. The other thing I yeah, might suggest. <laughs> well, Ruth says you can write stuff ex explicitly and people just don't read it. And that, I mean, you can go crazy, right? Like put it in bold and note and you know, italics, people just aren't gonna, asterisks, aren't, people still aren't going to see it. And the other thing too, for yarn substitution is, but it is a tricky thing. I don't know. It is tricky. Uh, it may help to look at the weight of the yarn that's used in the sample per yardage, not necessarily the stitch gauge over four inches. Um, so yarn substitution is tricky. Jackie, I don't envy you. It can be very hard to meet a customer's needs when they come in with a pattern. So kudos to you and all the best for finding what works best for a, for a customer. Um, what if you gave the gauge with half a stitch over four inches and then gave a note? Absolutely. The, like, we, like we said, it is, it's really just giving the knitter the best information in a concise manner that gives them the success they need to set up the project and to make it to match your design. Um, there's no one way to do things. There, we have our opinions because we're super opinionated tech editors, but you can do things whatever way works best for you and your style and your method of pattern writing. And your knitters, right? Um, and your knitters. What do your knitters prefer? What is your, your favorite fans, who are they? What do they, what do they like to have? So she's saying um, you could give a note after you give your 11 and a half stitches to the, to four inches, mm -hmm. you could give a note that says to check your gauge yeah. accurately measure for 21 stitches over eight inches. So give them the information that they need to help them succeed. But eventually it really is in the knitter's lap 
and that's their responsibility because it's their project, their yarn, their needles um, to to make things work according to your That's pattern. a really good idea because then you're giving them the gauge they expect mm -hmm. to have. But you know, well, and have. not only are you giving them a more accurate way to get the gauge and the pattern, but you're giving mm -hmm. them a little sneaky advice that yes. um, it's really important to measure to over a large area. Knit a large gauge swatch. Large Come gauge on, swatch. bulky yarn. You can knit 23 stitches. Um, so yeah. here's, uh, we did have two other questions. We're almost out of time. So I want to make mm -hmm. sure we get these covered. Um, and they're about sizing. So uh, who asked, uh, how do you know when a neck circumference is too big? For the cast on stitches, I think she asked. For like, the cast on for stitches. For the cast on in the neck. So if you already have, I would ask, um, are you talking about when you're grading out the sizes? You need to look at your sample size what is the circumference in relation to the neck girth? Like the, your girth is the circumference. Or what is your circumference in the sample related in proportion to the shoulder width? So you're going to go back, like we've mentioned before. You need to go to the size charts. Size charts. You've got to look at that relationship between the neck opening and the body measurement in that size. And the then- The same way you would do for measuring any part. Yes, right? exactly. And so then what you do is you apply, this is just basic grading principles, you apply that same principle, the same proportion and the same ease measurement across all the sizes. Um, then you will you'll realize when you look at those numbers, if you are knitting for, or grading to a size six or seven X, you will realize, hey, 32 inch neck circumference is huge. Um, that's not going to work. So it's got to match the body. It's got to fit the body in the same way for each size across sizes. But and you got to sure use your good size chart. One thing I think you need to be sure of in, a, in, in, in casting on at the neck, is there going to then be some kind of border picked up later? Or is this mm -hmm. your neck beginning? Because mm -hmm. um, it matters, right? It you does need to matter. Factor in whatever border is going to be added on if there is one, and if yeah, there if there's one trim away, or but, collar, yeah, find out right. what that's going to be. I think we have um, Joan says I have a client who uses non-standard size swatches, states how many to cast on for the swatch, and exactly how to work the swatch, and then what so, size it would be. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of a lot that, we were saying that about like specific stitches, but you can certainly do it anytime. There are yeah. people who give instructions for how to swatch. Yeah. And, and I think feel and free the to same do is that. Giving that. The same as giving that note or giving it over whatever. It's mm -hmm. like a way that you have control over yes. this pattern and, and what you think needs to be done. And to how get to be helpful for your knitter. So. And how to be helpful and to get them what they want. Right. Yeah. And it can be in like a little tiny text box. It doesn't have to take yeah. up a lot of room. Yeah. That's usually um, what I've seen. Somewhere on the front, there's like a little section right. that's like gauge, gauge swatch. Yeah. And, and there'll be a note that says, you know, why it's important to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so we have one last question, which was about uh, armhole depth. Uh, if there is a point five. So half an inch ease at the armhole depth from the body size um, in the sample size, well, how do you apply it to, should the larger sizes have more armhole depth? My opinion, and a lot of people may disagree with me, is give the same amount of ease across sizes. So if you have half an inch of armhole ease in a size 40 and that's your sample size and then you need to give that same amount of ease when you are grading in all the sizes. When we add or subtract ease in different ratio ratios, different proportions, Rates. it actually changes the fit of the garment. Mm -hmm. You want the garment to fit the same way no matter how no matter what size, in relation to the body size chart that you use. Now, granted, if your body size chart's off in the armhole depth, then that's going to be an issue too. Um, but generally speaking, the principle is apply the ease in the same way in order to meet your restrictions of stitch gauge or stitch, you know, pattern multiples and all that. 
there seems to be this some kind of, I mean, I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but there seems to be some kind of myth out there mm-hmm. that, that um, larger, the larger sizes need more ease. The larger sizes need more ease everywhere. Is, larger sizes need to have these, I'm, like, a joke. more ease here, more ease here, bigger than their body. Um, no. Wouldn't you mm-hmm. want the, the, to fit the way it fits in the picture, to fit the way it's supposed to fit? Yes. You know, um, and that's why the schematic is there, okay? The schematic's mm-hmm. important. You're using a size chart that you have found to be reliable, that you've gotten good feedback on your whatever. I mean, you want right. to do the best you can to find a most reliable size chart that you can. And we do talk about that in another uh, in another um, talk, another Go, talk, but yeah, you know, just because you have a bigger body doesn't mean mm-hmm. you want all this extra fabric everywhere. No. And I don't know if that misconception is there because it's a people, people just think that, or if it's a misnomer, it's a misconception about how sizing works. People sometimes think that if there's this much of an increase in your bust, that same mm-hmm. amount of increase from body size to body size happens everywhere on the body. I, I think right. it might even be rooted in the designers uh, assuming some intention on what they think it should fit. Um, yeah. That it, fit, um, that it should fit differently in the larger sizes. And I, think I honestly think too, that's, that's rooted in fat phobia, and I that think they would have a different too, fit. They want to make sure, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure that you have your sweater... Um, goes up to large enough sizes and small enough sizes you want to make sure so you're like ah well just to be sure i want to make sure it'll fit so just to be sure we'll add more add more ease here and that's why the schematic matters so if you have a schematic on your pattern of what the measurements are the bicep Mm -hmm. measurements will be listed right and the yoke depth sometimes is listed sometimes armhole depth is listed bust not all the time listed. but the bust is listed the bicep is listed wrist like people can look at the schematic and say okay this, i want more ease i'm gonna size, choose a knit a different size or this Let size them will decide. Fit me. but it's almost like lying to the knitter yes to show a picture of what it looks like and to explain exactly. in your introduction how it's going to fit mm-hmm. and then they go to knit it and unbeknownst to them You've made their size completely different than and fit differently. Your introduction and completely different than the picture. It's like lying. Right? Don't lie to your it's knitters. Not, it's not ever. I mean, and I, like I said, I might be speaking out of turn because this may. Percent on board with you, Christina. Yeah. Anybody except the knitter, what kind of exactly. fit they want or what kind of sweater they exactly. want to wear. Exactly. You know, Let so you do want to apply the same the ease. ease across sizes mm-hmm. on all points of the yep. body. Yep. The same ease across sizes on all points of the body. And like I said, sometimes I think people think that because the bicep measurement can be so tricky and can be so like, it's kind of subjective. Like everybody seems to yeah. have like different arm measurements, no matter what your size is. But, um, I True. don't think, but that's why you have the schematic. It says there. Yes. And then you let know, them choose. Let yeah. the knitter decide if they want more or less ease. Yeah. I personally am a small, I have a small body. I like more ease, but I'm going to, so I'm going to choose to knit a size that matches my ease. Um, or you're going to pick I'm, a sweater mm-hmm. that's just a different design. Different design. Or so we're, we are out of time for today. Mm. We love talking to you guys. We love being helpful. Um, Go to the link in my profile if you're interested in a little thing that we made for you, which is a design checklist um, before you send your pattern to your editor. Yeah, Um, it's a good checklist just to check off what you want to make sure is all good before you send it We think it's cool. (laughs) Um, And then if uh, we also have some things coming down the pipe that we'd like to provide for you guys in the next few weeks. So we'll see you next Monday. Um, send us questions if you have any them. questions. And Swatch we'll out, you. we might be opinionated. Swatch. About <laughs> Everybody, swatch large and have a good week. <laughs> Bye. See you guys soon.